On this episode of Locked on Angels, Perry Manassian signs a two-year extension with the Halos on Thursday. So what does it mean? Where does it take our favorite team? How should we feel about it? We're here to give you all of your thoughts and answers. It's time to get locked on with Mike and John, and this is Locked on Angels. You are Locked on Angels, your daily Los Angeles Angels podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks for making Locked On Angels the first listen of the day. It's the number one Angels podcast out there. Thanks for being here. You can find us anywhere you get your podcasts, including Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and SiriusXM by searching Locked On Angels. And if you'd like to give back to the Super Halo Bros for all the Super Halo content, here's some things that you can do. Leave us a rate and a review on Apple Podcasts. If you're watching on YouTube, hit that thumbs up button. And if you're not subscribed already, please subscribe and become a Locked On Everydayer. And whether you're watching or listening, come over to YouTube, leave a comment. It's really one of the best ways to get in touch with us and be a part of the conversation. And this episode of Locked On Angels is brought to you by SupplyHouse.com. It's the reliable way to get parts really, really fast. Shop for your next plumbing, HVAC, or electrical job and get fast shipping from coast to coast at SupplyHouse.com. Thank you for being here for this episode of Locked On Angels, where it's your team every day. You've got the Frisch Brothers here with you, a.k.a. the Super Halo Bros. My name is John, and that's my brother Mike. And my name is Mike, and that's my brother John. It's our third season talking Angels baseball here on Locked On Angels, five days a week. On today's show, we're going to be talking about GMPM's extension, what it means for this team, and get into some of your thoughts, but a quick programming note. First of all, if you're looking for a recap of the Blue Jays game, we're going to have a full series recap on Monday after this four-game set. We'll take you through all the Blue Jays games. Second, we talked about doing a Fan Mail Friday, but since this news broke, we decided to move it to Tuesday. Mike, what are we going to do? Like talk to me Tuesday. Is it that is. what we can call it? All right. Talk there to me is. Tuesday. So <laughs> this fan mail Friday that you're looking for is going to be talk to me Tuesday. We're going to save all your questions that you asked because there were many great questions, but like the big news out of yesterday was that GMPM Perry Manassian has received a two year extension. Let's talk about it. Yeah. It's going to take him through the 2026 season and shout out to Jeff Fletcher who had this first from the OC register. Perry's contract was up at the end of the season. There was a, a lot of questions about what was going to happen, and there was not any words at all, right? No reports of whether he was going to stay as the GM or not. And these things typically can get worked out in the off season, but because his contract was ending, it's nice to know that they actually did something before the contract was up. Now, the Sporting Tribune noted that if Manassian were to fulfill the contract through 2026, it would make him the Angels' longest tendered GM since Bill Stoneman, wow. which was 1999 to 2007. <sighs> he's a just, pretty good GM, was dre- Dreaming about those Bill Stoneman days and just, uh, yeah, just reminiscing. Anyway, continue. continue. He was a successful GM, John, because there yeah. was 02 and then 04, 05, 06, and, and they had a farm system. Mike. And they were great, right? So here's the statement that came from Artie Moreno. He said this, over the last four years, Perry and his baseball operations staff have begun to lay the foundation for a bright future of Angels baseball. We have been impressed by the steps that Perry has taken to infuse our major league team with young and exciting talent while also revamping our player development process. We believe this extension will allow him to continue this vision of building sustainable success throughout the Angels organization and deliver us a championship for our fans. Artie uh, made that statement, and then Perry Manassian had a statement. He said, I'm incredibly thankful to Artie and Carol Marino for their continued trust and support. I would also I would also like to thank John Carpino for the tremendous working relationship we have developed over the last four years. I look forward to continuing our plans of bringing the Angels back to being a consistent championship contender. So that was the statement from Perry Manassian. Mike, I got to share a little bit of my initial reactions. I, sp- I spoke on your behalf a little bit yesterday yep. on social media, yep. but I want to hear your initial reaction to this news as it broke on Thursday. It makes sense, right? Because Ron Washington has one more year. You don't want him to be a, a lame duck manager with who's going to be the new GM. That's what Perry has inherited for the last couple of years, right? It yeah. really wasn't his guy. And so being able to have his guy and to be able to have his fingerprints on this organization, it makes sense that they would give him at least one more year. The fact that he has two more years, I think, is really good news because we're going to talk about it. Continuity, 
consistency, something this team has not had for years and years and years. And it seems to be that Perry is at this point, the best guy that can operate in the Artie Moreno playground. He seems to be the guy that can figure out how to make this team successful or try to make, I guess it's probably a better way to put it, try to make this team successful and competitive through the restraints that have been placed on him and placed on this organization throughout the years. He has really proven himself, John, to be great at drafting ready now players. There's a lot of players that are on the major league roster that should be in the minor leagues, right? But they needed to be on the major league roster. And so when we read Artie's statement about the developmental process, I, I, like that he mentioned that I just mm-hmm. don't know if the developmental process is in the angels organization or if the developmental process is in the colleges and high schools that they're drafting these players from. Right. Yeah. You know, it, it makes me a, a little bit encouraged. The fact that Artie Marino brought up, you know, a recognition of what Perry has been able to bring exciting yeah. young talent while revamping our player development process. Mike, I, I think it has been revamped in, to some degree. I think that there is the idea that, you know, Barry Enright's pitching and hitting labs, they're being built. They're yep. being built in Arizona. That, that that's, that's happening. And that's a long time coming. I think it's absolutely ridiculous that it's taken this long. However, it's good that it's happening. And this was, this was the goal of Jerry DePoto, right? To come in and make these changes, to get, the angels into the 21st century to get to Billy Epler was coming in to get the angels into the 21st century. Did anything happen? No, no. no. And, and there was a lot of conflict. There was a lot of butting heads and, and Perry seems to be the first guy to actually get the ball rolling on that kind of stuff. I think the initial reaction to this news of, of Perry Manassi and getting this two year extension, there's a lot of people trying to evaluate what this means for the halos. They're trying to evaluate what Perry has been able to do as GM, what he's not been able to do, the success on the field, the success with the minor league teams. And I think what's interesting is that it's all very nuanced. I don't Mm -hmm. think that there's a very clear straight answer of, yeah, of course, or Perry, I tend to lean and, and I'm sure you do too. I tend to lean on the side of, okay, this is good news. Yeah. Because I don't hold the major league record against Perry Manassian. And one of the reasons why I don't do that is you have to look at who's in charge of what at the end of the day, the areas in which Perry has thrived are areas where it seems seems he's had full autonomy to do what he needs to do to scout players, to draft players, to sign international free agents, right on a budget, of course, because we know that the scouting department is not huge. It's not, the Rays, it's not, you know, the Dodgers, it's not those kinds of scouting departments, but what he has been able to do on the limited resource that he's been given, I think that he succeeded in the areas where he has autonomy, where he hasn't succeeded is at the major league level, yeah. right? He He's had some decent signings. Uh, you know, Brandon Drury was great his first year. I think he did a good job of piecing together a complete team, in 2023, it sucks that it all fell apart. It sucks that Trout and Rendon got hurt. It sucks that all of that happened the way that it did. I don't think if it were up to him, he would have kept Shohei Otani. I think he probably would have traded him before 2023. Agreed. I think he would have traded him at the deadline. And the reason I say all this is because you have to look at who's in charge of the major league level. That's Carpino. That's Artie Marino. And I think that's why those areas are not thriving in the same way that player development and drafting and scouting and international free agency have gone fairly well. And I know that we can knock on the record. Again, I don't think that that's Perry Manassian's fault. I know that we can knock on, well, they're ranked 29th as a farm system. Right. But imagine if Logan O'Hoppy, Shawnawell, Neto, Joyce, all those guys are still in the minor leagues, then they're not 29th. Yeah. They may not be 20th. They may not be 15th, but they're certainly not 29th. And I think that's the big key here is that when you assess this, you have to look at what areas have worked. I'll put it this way. You as an Angels fan, as an everydayer, what are the things you like about this team? 
And if I had to assume, it would be, well, I like Logan O'Hoppy. I like Zach Neto. I like the way Ben Joyce throws real hard and is going to be the future closer, right? Those things you enjoy about this team right now are all due to Perry Manassian. Right. And I think that it's okay to admit that. And it's also okay to go, yeah, but he hasn't done a very good job with the major league roster. I agree with you. I just think you have to understand who's in charge of what. And in the areas that Perry has full control, has autonomy, I think he's done pretty well. What do you say? Yeah, I agree with you. And I think if you look back, you look at what DePoto and Epler did, they did something that that Perry hasn't done. They failed at the minor league level and they failed at the major league level. Ah, now, yeah. now De, DePoto did go and get some pieces, right? He did go and sign some big guys, but DePoto also inherited a pretty good team. He inherited mm-hmm. a pretty good roster. They were already good. Yeah. Epler, not necessarily, but he didn't do much to change it around. And his draft has not been very successful. Those guys have not made it to the major leagues and been successful yet. Those guys have taken a long time to get to the major leagues. The thing that we'll need to pay attention to, and here's where we can begin to really judge Perry Manassian, is what happens with these young guys that he's drafted Mm -hmm. next year and the year after. Alex Anthropolis of the Braves is a great GM. Here's why. Young guys that have been drafted, that have been infused into the team. And then what he's done, John, is he's picked a couple of of apples and, and bananas and, and oranges <laughs> from the free agent market. Mostly, it, mostly from the A's yes. because they're trading everybody. Yes. Yeah, yeah. However, he has picked really good players to backfill yes. his roster or, hey, let's put Matt Olson here, but he's got Austin Riley and he's got Arcia and he's got this guy and he's got, right? Like he's had a young core to build from, even in his pitching staff. Perry Manassian now has two more years to really start to see these guys blossom. If they don't start blossoming next year, then I think the narrative on this show and for reasonable everydayers will start to change, right? Because you're right. It's not, it's not black and white. It's very nuanced. And so let's see what these young guys can do because I think that the narrative around Artie, the volume will go down if these young guys start to play up. If Mm. they start to be who they are supposed to be, the volume will go down on the minor leagues being ranked so low. If the major league guys start to play like they play, the volume will go down on all of that. If they start to be who we expect them to be and who Perry expected them to be. So now we can really pull out the microscope. We can really pull out the magnifying glass and go, okay, how are things going? Remember, it takes about three years to get your fingerprints on something before the culture starts to change. This is year four. And I think we all could agree that the culture has changed a bit Yeah, with the players, also with the management. It's not super rad, super terrific, right? And and when you look back at like 99, 2000 with Sosha and 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 with Buddy Black and, and that crew he brought in, the same judgments that people are making of Wash and Enright and Johnny Washington could be the same judgments that they were making back in those times as Fair. well, right? What changed the narrative was 2002. They won and then yeah. they started winning, right? And so how long was that? Well, it was about two to three years after Stoneman took over, he did inherit a really good minor league system and a major league roster, but he did a good job of piecing a great roster together. So it's okay now to really go, are these guys good? And did Perry do a good job? We're going to start to see those results and can make a, I think a more reasonable, articulate judgment call of that moving forward. Hey, thanks for making Locked On Angels your first listen of the day. The Angels are playing the Blue Jays, 4.07 Pacific time. You can catch every pitch of the Angels' hometown broadcast on SiriusXM with the SXM app. All you got to do is search Angels. Coming up on Locked On Angels, what does this mean for the team moving forward? And we'll get into some of your comments and responses here in just a minute. Just got a delivery of liquid IV to my house, Johnny, and... Come to find out uh, they're all gone because my sporty youngest daughter who plays basketball uses that after her workouts <laughs> and so are my older kids as well. They actually really love it and I love it too. Yeah, it's, it's real, real good. It is it is real good. It's not like one of those things where you want to talk it up and then you you actually taste it and go, it's not, it's not great at all. Liquid IV is an anomaly in that world. One stick of liquid IV and 16 ounces of water, it's going to hydrate you better than water. And that's what it's really about. 
hydration, giving you what you need, your electrolytes. It's better than any leading sports drink. In fact, it has three times the electrolytes than the sports drinks out there, plus eight vitamins and nutrients all in a single stick. You can take it after a workout, after a long day, after being outside. Maybe it's just been a tiresome day and you've been lounging around. You can take it at any point. And the best part is it really does taste great. I got cherry and I got the rocket pop. And those are really nice. delicious. So you should check those out. You can get 20% off of your first order when you go to their website, liquidiv.com. Use our promo code MLB at checkout. Again, 20% off when you go to their website, liquidiv.com, and use our promo code MLB. Tear, pour, live more, Liquid IV. And today's show is brought to you by our friends at Supply House. You can order supplies from the website that's made for the skilled trades. Thousands of parts from hundreds of brands. In just a couple clicks at supplyhouse.com, they give you 24 7 access to a huge selection of plumbing, HVAC, and electrical supplies. Plus, you can get fast delivery from anywhere in the United States. If you need help with an order, they have industry leading after sales service with friendly and knowledgeable customer sales and support teams. You can talk to a real person. Real it's people. not it's not AI, it's not a voicemail, it's not <laughs> press to talk to a human. Right. It's not that sort of thing. Humans there's, every time. <laughs> <laughs> there's great news for plumbers, technicians, contractors. Being a pro has its perks because trade industry professionals are able to join their free Trade Master program for free shipping and serious discounts on every single order. Over 100,000 pros already trust the Trade Master program to deliver results. Apply for your membership today, get a competitive edge, and order supplies at supplyhouse.com. Slash TM save money and time when you order online, order plumbing, HVAC, and electrical supplies from supplyhouse.com. Real people, real service. Thanks for making Locked On Angels your first listen of the day. Now, for your second listen, check out Locked On MLB. Our friend Soli is going to make you laugh, make you cry, make you smarter on his his podcast. It's it's really good, really funny, and he talks about all of baseball. And he's got some of those nuanced stories from years ago, and you can have like story time with Soli. It's fantastic. So make your second listen, Locked On MLB. It's available on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts. It's a part of the Locked On Podcast Network, where it's your team every day. And the Angels play the Blue. Jays at 407 Pacific time. I like these early games. They're a lot of fun. I get to go to bed early. So yes, catch every pitch of the Angels hometown broadcast with Sirius XM on the SXM app. Just search Angels. Mike, now that Perry Manassian is confirmed to keep the job for the next two years, we want to ask the question, what does this mean for their future? What does this mean for the Halos moving forward? This is something that I tweeted from Super Halo Bros yesterday. Consider what's gone well for the Angels in recent years. Oh, Hoppy. Neto, Shawnawell, Joyce, Christian Moore, we're excited about, right? There's there's plenty of other things I think we could name. But then you have to consider the Major League Club and what's gone wrong there. And then think about who's ultimately in charge of each of those areas. Mm -hmm. I mentioned it in segment one. When Perry has full autonomy of what he's in control of, those areas seem to be doing well. But is this the best way to evaluate Perry? Is there an issue with evaluating him based on this team's record over the last four years? Do you think that also is part of the equation? Or do you feel like that's an entirely separate thing? Because we've established that's mostly Artie's world. That's Carpino's world. What do you say? I think... If there's a percentage, I would say like 25% of this, we do need to look at the major league roster and the major league record in the past. Mm -hmm. Moving forward, that should be about 85% now, mm. right? Yeah. I think that it, I think it should grow because now you're in year five, right? Ending yeah. year four, starting year five. And there should be some tangible growth and some tangible difference. Something you and I've talked about often on the show, 2026 is kind of the year that things should begin to blossom, right? Mm -hmm. Kate and Dana should be here. Uh, the the Ohapis and Shauna Wells and those guys have three or four years under their belt, right? right. And then some of the younger guys that are in the minor leagues, like maybe George Clausen and Al Daguiri and, and some of those guys, maybe they're ready by then and we're not reliant upon, I don't know, some random pitcher in, in the starting rotation like Johnny Cueto, Johnny right? Cueto, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and so I think that you, it's, it's not 
wrong to say, man, they just haven't been successful at the major leagues. You're absolutely right. I just think that the weight of that needs to not be as heavy as it is moving forward starting now. Yeah, I think about I think about the the context in which Perry Manassian or really any GM entered into this situation after 2020. Remember Epler was let go. They they got Perry Manassian before 2021, a new first year GM, which we all know Artie is not going to shell out the money for a Dave Dombrowski or or uh, I'm trying to think of uh, the exciting guy who went over to the from the from the Brewers to the Mets, right? David Stearns. Yes. Uh, he, Artie has not historically shelled out the money for an experienced veteran GM. Bill Stoneman was experienced and a veteran because he was already there by the time Artie took over this team. And ever since then, we've had new GM after new GM after new GM. Some have been, you know, assistants like Perry Manassian or Billy Epler, right? But I think it's key that when Perry entered this situation, the Angels were in this pattern of, hey, we have Shohei and Mike Trout and Anthony Rendon and Justin Upton and Albert Pujols. We we have to make this team successful. We have to get them to the playoffs. We have to do this. We have to do that. And under the arty restrictions, they just didn't make it happen. They And I think the record shows that, right? I think the best they did, I know they finished with the same record in 23 as 22, but I will say that there was a longer period of success in terms of making the playoffs. Basically, we had playoff hopes right up until August, I think, when everything yeah. fell apart, Yeah, right? And I know that they weren't, they were fighting for a spot, all of that stuff, but they had playoff hopes pretty much all throughout 2023. Then Trout got hurt, Rendon got hurt. They were kind of trying to hang in there. It just didn't work out. I think that Perry Manassian entered this situation trying to spin a basketball with this hand and trying to, you know, spin a plate with this hand. I, that's a terrible metaphor, but what <laughs> I'm trying to say is there there were there were two different actions that needed to take place yeah. heading in two opposite directions. And I think that Perry has navigated what Artie wanted versus what this team truly needs. And I think that now that he's hired the manager that he wants, now that he's been able to, by extension, hiring that manager, build out a coaching staff that he wants, now that they're not so much in a, a holding pattern, it's pretty clear that there's there's progress that can be made. In fact, I love the way that Jared Timms of Talking Halos put it. He tweeted this out, and I shared it because I thought it was so good. Yeah. Somebody asked him his thoughts on this extension. He said this, my thoughts remain the same that nothing changes until the big thing happens. And yep. we all know the big thing is already selling the team. Jared said, you can blame Perry for the team on the field right now, but when you're handcuffed like others were, it's hard to do your job to the fullest extent. Could it be better? Yes. This is key. Do I want it to start over? No, no. And Mike, I think that's where, I land too, because the alternative to not extending Perry Manassian is another first year GM, another new plan, another person learning how to work with Artie, how to operate in Artie's world. I don't want to see that again. And I think it's key that the alternative to not extending Perry is all right, we're, we're, we're starting over with another GM, just like we did with Epler, just like we did with DePoto, just like we did with Reagan's, right? It's it just, yeah. it would just be repeating the yeah. same thing over and over again, right? Yeah, and that's not saying that the next person was going to be worse than Perry. I know that there's been some narrative out there, like you don't make, they're not making this move because they're afraid the next guy is going to be worse or the next girl is going to be worse. That's not what we're saying. What we're saying is this, history has taught us that a change at general manager doesn't necessarily mean a change for this team mm -hmm. on the field. Mm -hmm. What we've seen Perry do is what the previous guys since Bill Stoneman have not done. They have not done the minor leagues well. And I know that the minor leagues are not ranked high. However, those guys are playing at the major league level because they've drafted really, really well. And so getting rid of Perry would hit the reset button on trust, on authority, 
on direction. I know that we complain about clarity and strategy and those types of things. It would have hit the reset button on whatever strategy they've come up with, right? And the fact that he mentioned John Carpino, Perry mentioned John Carpino in that statement, I think was a tip of a cap to somebody who's in charge of him. But also, I don't think he's blowing smoke. They probably have a pretty good relationship. And Mm. it'll be interesting to see what happens in these next two years. Because if Perry is now earning the trust, which is what an extension really communicates, he wasn't fired like DePoto. He wasn't fired like Epler. He wasn't fired and removed like Regans, right? It, It shows that maybe... There's actually a healthy relationship there between Perry and Carpino and Perry and Artie. To know that there were the words player development, that that, those words came out of Artie Moreno's mouth, allegedly from this statement. That's shocking to me. (laughs) That he uttered the words player development. And the reason he did is because Perry Manassian was the one to make that happen. Every day is it's time to get in shape, and you can with Tonal. It's the world's smartest and most effective strength training system that helps you to get stronger than you are right now. Powered by AI, Tonal helps with those reps that are difficult. It learns with every rep so that you can deliver and have workouts that are personalized for you. It's like having a personal trainer at home without spending all of the money or them yelling at you. It's going to help you optimize every single workout just for you. Unlike traditional gym equipment, Tonal uses adaptive digital weight to advance your training techniques. With Tonal, you're getting an efficient workout personalized for you, and it's available in the time that you have. So it's perfect for professional athletes to Moms of three and dads who are on the go, Tonal is trusted by thousands who have become their strongest. And they have a smart strength training system that takes all the guesswork out of working out so that you can make sure that you're making the most of every single rep. Right now, Tonal is offering, get this, our listeners only, $200 off your Tonal purchase with our promo code LOCKEDONMLB. So visit Tonal.com. Enter that promo code locked on MLB two hundred dollars off. Once again, tonal.com. Enter the promo code locked on MLB. Mike, there were so many uh, different reactions to this news from Perry Manassian accepting this two year extensions, and we wanted to get to your responses. Our everydayers from Instagram and YouTube and Twitter. There's lots of comments regarding Perry's ability to navigate Artie Marino's, I called it a snow globe the other day. You called, <laughs> yes. you called it a playground. Yeah. I, I love I love all that. Smed49 on Instagram said, I like the young players Perry has added. Hopefully Marino just stays out of his way. Mrs. K. Holstein on Instagram said, I'm okay with this move. Definitely mixed emotions, but I can appreciate Perry doing his best work around the Artie restrictions. Benjamin F27 said, I don't blame any of the failures at the MLB level on Perry. Those guys like Detmers, Ward, and Adele aren't his guys. Mm. The guys Perry has gotten you, like said in the like you said in the minor league level, is why he deserves more time. Good move by the Angels. And then 19 Rob Dog 91 said, with Artie as the owner. Does this even matter? Mike, what do you say to that question? Just like I said last segment, I think that this proves that there is some trust built. This proves that there is some sort of strategy that maybe they haven't announced, but they've talked about in-house, already mentioning player development, already mentioning what uh, what Perry has done over the last few years of the young guys. I think that there's a lot of good that can happen here. It's a celebration of consistency and continuity where Artie isn't just making a decision on a whim. Remember, that's why Josh Hamilton was signed and Tory Hunter was let go. Remember, that's why Anthony Rendon was signed and they didn't get the big arm that season because Artie is the, hey, what's going to give us the really big publicity stunt movement right now, right? right. And, and this isn't it. And it shows that maybe there's some consistency and continuity that are moving forward in this organization. Yeah, there were a lot of comments on consistency and continuity. I feel like we accidentally made continuity a buzzword on <laughs> yesterday's show because everybody kept saying it. It was Do great. Do we get copyright money for that? Or <laughs> I, it's just, you know what? That's our new that's our new phrase here on Lockdown Angels. Continuity. Jeff Mather on Twitter just said continuity. Atta boy, Jeff. I love it. Campfire Design <laughs> Studio said, OMG. 
we actually getting long-term consistency in the front office? I could cry. Same. Angels World 17 on Twitter said, at the very least, I believe Perry has a plan. I'll take that over starting over smart again. Yep. At behind the garage on Twitter said, <laughs> OMG continuity again. Same <laughs> do up on Twitter said, I'm glad he's staying on board. This organization needs stability. Hopefully he can improve on the pitching side of things. Mike Michelle Cajun on Twitter said, same, <laughs> same old, <laughs> same old dumb angels. Last place gets you an extension. Is there, is there credence to that? Is there a point there? What do you think? Well, I think that if you're just evaluating the major league roster, yeah, you're right, Michelle. That th This can be very, very frustrating. But as we've talked about, would you want to just start over? Or would you want to continue with what Perry has built? And I would, I would argue, Michelle, that Perry has built something that previous GMs have not. And so having these young guys be on the major league roster and potentially be superstars is really great. If you're just looking at the record and you're just looking at the major league roster, you're right. It's easy to be frustrated, but I think that this is nuanced and goes deeper. Now, Michelle, two years from now, we're in the same spot. This tweet, bring it back because you're right. This, this he should not get extended if this continues. Right, right. Uh, Paul Paul Dapkis on YouTube said Perry has not impressed me, but I don't think having Artie Marino select another GM will improve anything. Let's ha hope PM is able to land some good young people in next year's draft. And and I really think that's the key, Mike, is he has to continue to do what he's doing. He hasn't failed yet yeah. in the guys that he's brought up to the major league level. I know that initially Neto and Sean Well struggled. Uh, Hoppy got hurt. But this season shows that these guys are ready now. And that's more than we can say for Joe Adele and Taylor Ward, guys who have taken a long time to develop. And, and, and even like Kyron Paris or Jordan Adams, who are Billy Epler guys, where are they? Where are they? They're yeah. still in the minor leagues because they just aren't quite good enough to, to cut it at the major league level. How about this one? BH Becca said, this is called failing upward, hmm. but at the same time, as we've discussed what previous or what premium GM with options would take this job. They had to keep him more frightening is that this signals Marino not selling the team. Does that what do you think, Mike? I don't know if that necessarily one plus one equals two in this instance. I don't think mm. that that's what this means. I think what this means is what we've talked about, that there might be some synergy and some good vibes in and that. That's the hope, right? Um, I think that what Perry has done has been much better than what we've talked about in the past. And so I know that it can be frustrating, but the reality is, is that th I think this was a really good move. T bot one on YouTube said, good. If he can put Artie, uh, put up with Artie's micromanaging, right? Perry and seems I, to be able to do that. I think he has, absolutely. Thomas Joseph said, yes, lots of ancillary benefits to, with continuity of leadership. I agree with that. I think having consistency in the front office is a good thing. Nathan Dale Bout said on YouTube, Angel's farm system is ranked the worst in MLB. Extending Perry is like putting lipstick on a pig, a losing record in every year he's been GM. I, I just think yeah, this, 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 Farm system would be ranked much higher if we didn't have the young guys at the right. major league level. Nathan always has some pretty good takes. So Nathan, we, we I'm going to push back on you just for a moment here because I think that what what you're seeing is probably not the full picture. And the full picture is if this team was successful to major league level, then I think the minor leagues would be ranked higher. Also, those rankings are so arbitrary because it's not even including a lot of the new talent that has been infused through the draft and trades. And so, again, it's hard to evaluate because not many of the guys have stayed down in the minor leagues to evaluate the minor leagues. I think that what we're going to find at the beginning of next year is that the Angels minor leagues are going to be stronger. And then midway point, I think it'll be even stronger simply because there's going to be there's really good players down there. They just need time to prove themselves and time to flex on who they are and the losing the comment about the losing record at the major league level i i just it goes to show that he hasn't put all of his energy into trying to make a winning record to save his job yeah like 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 they let these guys do their thing this year develop at the cost of having a good record but also with the emphasis on let's just get these guys to be good this year yeah. and i yeah. think that they've accomplished that uh, by the end of this season, for sure. Hey, thanks for making Locked On Angels your first listen of the day. Now for your second listen, check out Locked On MLB. It's available on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts. It's also part of the Locked On Podcast Network, where it's your team every day.
Hey, give us a follow on Twitter at Locked On Angels and at Super Halo Bros on Twitter and Instagram. Whether you're watching or listening, come on over to today's show on YouTube. Get in the comment section. Hit that like button and subscribe button on the way down. It's the best way to interact with us is on in the YouTube comments. Mike, what do we have on deck for Monday's show? Well, we're going to recap the Blue Jays series, so all four games on Monday. Plus, John and I have a special announcement, and it's something that you get to be a part of. And we can't wait for it. So we're going to tell you all about it on Monday on Locked on Angels. All right, friends. We have. We hope you have a great weekend. Until then, my name is John, and that's my brother, Mike. And my name is Mike, and that's my brother, John. Thanks for being here with us, everybody. And we'll see you back here on Monday. Loved all the hot takes. All the, all the good conversations. Hot, spicy. You everydayers are smart, reasonable, brilliant, good fans.